welcome to season 2 of the Travel Stories with Marsh podcast. If you love the world around you and you love exploring different landscapes, cultures, cuisines and cities, then you are in the right place because here every week I will be talking to an incredible travel enthusiast who will take us on a fascinating journey around the world by sharing their travel stories. Today's special guest is someone who's been living overseas since she was 18 years old. While globe trotting around the world used to be her profession at one time, today she does the same with a lot of zeal and enthusiasm to enjoy the beauty of the world around us. Kelly Lindberg is a best-selling author, entrepreneur and a personal brand strategist and today she is here to share her very interesting travel stories with us. Kelly it's so wonderful to have you on the podcast today. Thanks for inviting me and to relive some fabulous memories. Like I'm really looking forward to doing this. So me too. um ask away. <laughs> So you know I just introduced you as someone who has been living overseas since you were 80 yeah. you left home when you were 80 to live abroad. Mm. So tell me how was it at the time were you scared was it very exciting to kind of leave home and you know be on your own yeah. and to explore the world what were your thoughts at that time? I think the prospect of moving I would you know the whole getting the job and it was just so exciting I was very ready to leave um Scotland mm-hmm. I, I'm not a lover of cold weather mm-hmm. and um I just I, I knew that there was something else out there for me and I'd seen this opportunity to apply originally as a holiday representative so this is where you would go and live overseas mm-hmm. for a season mm-hmm. and then you would um meet people from um it was from the UK anywhere any UK airport and you would take them to the hotel and you would look after them for two weeks and mm-hmm. I did that in Cyprus I did that in Gran Canaria Fortaventura was so exciting mm-hmm. but I remember the day my mum dropped me off at Glasgow airport and um, she says to me laterally I knew you were never coming back then oh. although that said I was only going for six months mm-hmm. to Cyprus. Mm-hmm. Yes, and what a beautiful place to kind of make your first destination, yeah, right? To be was. your first destination yeah. like from Scotland to Cyprus. It's yeah. such a different landscape. Um the sun is shining most oh, of the time. The sea brilliant. is beautiful. Yeah. But you know from then you were a holiday specialist then yeah. to now being a personal brand strategist. Yeah. What a journey. Yeah, so in between that so I did sort of 4 years of that and then mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I'm ready to go back to Scotland. I've had my fun. Mm-hmm. I've had my travel like maybe I should go and get a proper job and you know just do something proper and mm-hmm. and I swear I lasted about six weeks <laughs> and I found a job advert for mm-hmm. um, Emirates Airline oh, okay. and I saw it was based in Dubai and mm-hmm. I was like I have no idea where Dubai is but let's go and find out and I got the job with Emirates and then um, moved here. So that then gave me the the sort of the wings to travel the world and and yeah. I loved it. Like I'm not your backpacking type. I do like to um do nice things. Of course. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah. yeah, so so that was kind of two and a half years and then it was during that time, you know, Dubai was exploding 2003, 4, 5 mm-hmm. and um launched my first business. So that was then um personal styling and shopping. Mm-hmm. And then I had that business for 15 years and then Amazing. sold that and I traveled a lot with clients with that yeah. as well, shopped yeah. all over the world and then sold that um in 2019 and was like, "No, I want to go deeper into the personal brand space." And it's just taken everything that I've done over the past 25 years. Mm-hmm. and it's it's i've got a um a, a business in it now and i love doing it love 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 it which is fantastic so would you also say this the whole journey that you had from one place to the other from one country to the other also helped you build these new careers and these oh, new professions that you have today right so now of course we already know that you've been traveling all around yeah. so today where are you taking us on a journey <gasps> i think I if I was to take you somewhere I'd mm-hmm. probably have to take you to my favorite destination which is and the last time I went was with my mum and it was to the Seychelles. Oh. So I'd pick that only because I'm going back and I'm getting married there and that was How always amazing. the dream. So what a dreamy yeah. place to get married. Yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. Yes, yeah, so take so. us to Seychelles then. Yeah so um, I love Seychelles. Um first when with family in 2005 when I was crew. Mm-hmm. Um and I was like let's explore. Or it's the first time I experienced the smell of nature as soon as the airplane doors open oh it's so lush it's so green uh-huh. and um yeah it was you know, just the the smell and the greenery mm-hmm. and again coming from the sandpit 
it's just yeah. sparks you, you yeah. it, it, it hits your different senses yeah. so um I love it there we went in 2000 so it was 2005 when I first went mm -hmm. we did self-catering there was very little on the island mm -hmm. um it was really hard to get food it was probably a mistake doing self-catering because it was there wasn't a lot available yeah. um and we hired a car mm -hmm. it was very rustic mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. but it was a wonderful experience but I remember um yeah, that and then went back, when was it, five years ago? My mum and I did the banyan tree. Um, that must we be had lovely. gone there. Yeah. I remember we had gone there as um, to look at it. And I was mm. like, one day I'd love to come back here. Mm. Like it just looked so luxurious. Mm. Mm. And then my mum and I ended up going back there. Oh, and um, it was there that I made a sort of a desire statement about my future and where I want to go. It's just a, a real, it's the energy of the island is beautiful. Mm, mm. And it was there, I was like, I want to meet someone and I want to travel more and do all this. And eight weeks later, I now met my husband and we're going wow. back there to get Definitely married. Definitely the energies It's good, different. it's good, it's good. Yeah, yeah. And you just, you know, you, you just hoped and wished for it and the universe gave it to you. So just describe Seychelles, since we are going there with you today, yeah. just describe the island to us like where would you stay would you stay in Mahe would you go to Ladig and those other so, places how do you describe kind of a day there and how is you say it's very lush yeah so give us a little more tell us a little I more. think the the um there's nature there mm -hmm. which again coming from here um is nice to be able to go out for a hike yeah you know you don't expect but there's there's those kind of opportunities you can sail there's I find there's quite a lot to do there mm -hmm. um there is um, this would be the Maldives yeah, as yeah. an alternative. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You can hire a car. Mm. You know, it's it's very easy to sort of get around. Plus, you can go and do day trips. So I've only ever done Mahi because I've only ever gone for four or five nights. Right. Um. So unless you go straight to somewhere else, but I haven't, I haven't personally done that. Love mm -hmm. to. But you but can stay in Mahi and do all the day trips. Loads, yeah. Loads, yeah. lots. Because to do. the island is small enough for you to be able to cover from say if you just stay yeah, in I'm one sure you can even drive around it in a day oh if you don't like do loads of stops mm. but um no I really love it it's um you know it's like what it looks like on the postcard it I, is like yeah, that yeah, yes. yeah yeah absolutely so, so you highly highly recommend yeah I love but also because it's four hours away from Dubai mm -hmm. cool. I think there's a lot more Airbnb mm -hmm. that's available now mm -hmm. um when we've done it in the past I think that was our big um, challenge which is why we did self-cater in the first time mm -hmm. 20 odd years ago right. was because it was way out of budget and yeah. we could only afford self-catering yeah. um, and we'd been told to take food with us oh and we did in those days okay. um, but we also took a lot of drink with us as well because so they've come a long way huge. then huge oh okay. massive there are options like yeah. in the Maldives you don't really have very many options no, because every island is a hotel like every hotel is on an island so you're pretty much stuck on the island or to the hotel yeah but that's not the case in no Seychelles. and I think that's why you've got the flexibility right you know we went when we didn't have much money so mm. it was different yeah yeah um whereas and that's you know, good to know i mean that's absolutely. good to know for everyone yeah yeah that absolutely. you have options and you're not stuck and you can kind of go there with different budgets yeah and you know things like you know if you want to hire a car and walk and hike mm. you know it doesn't mean you have to go and charter a yacht or yeah, yeah. um you know do expensive you Correct. know boat trips there's a lot of like public beaches you can go to mm -hmm. um as well so it's it's open in the sense of there's things that you can do that mm. doesn't necessarily need to cost lots of money. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, you said that your uh, you, your mum used to take you on a lot of holidays yeah. when you were kids. So, you know, growing up, which is that one place that kind of made you realize that you love travel? Like, you're like, hey, I do love doing this. It's so fun traveling around the world or just to explore a new place. Was there a place that kind of made you realize or any incident that happened that kind of, you know, made you realize that you love travel? I think, um, I think probably the Dominican Republic mm. was the, the, the sort of one of the last kind of family holidays we did. Okay. And, and how old were you then? 14, maybe. Wow. And I remember the first day, and it was raining. Mm -hmm. You can see there's a, a running theme. I don't like bad weather. Yeah. Um, and I remember just uh, I'm being... I'm with you, yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I remember my sister was with me and I remember we were there and the first day and I was just not loving this. And I remember saying to my mom, why couldn't we have just gone to Spain? Why did... You know, we were tired. We were jet lagged. Yeah. And it was just... And it's a long flight. It, from Scotland, it yeah, was. Yeah. I think we'd gone to Manchester. Mm. Then from Manchester, we'd got a flight out to the Caribbean. And I didn't understand it at the time that it was 
like as lovely as it was I was mm. just like it's raining it's dark mm. there's no friends mm. you know that kind of sullen teenage mm. and it ended up being one of the best holidays how so yeah just I think I guess we got a little bit more freedom yeah at that age I think um we did a lot of experiences on that trip so you know with all these years of traveling and being around so many different places is there one place um you know that has not kind of been a great experience or any incident that has happened because so many things happen when mm, you travel mm, you know mm. bags get lost some people yeah. get mugged some you know jet lag or anything anything that was unpleasant that happened to you ever oh i think having traveled so much um, there's been a few yeah i think probably the most disappointing mm -hmm. but it changed but the most disappointing experience i had was bali you know this was on my list of places mm. that i wanted to visit yeah. and um i remember arriving thinking this this isn't what i think we stayed in kuta mm -hmm. and i was like this isn't how i imagined bali to be yeah yeah and it really i, I just i didn't enjoy it was just everything about the whole experience was like this is not my kind of thing this mm. is not how I envisaged mm -hmm. Bali and mm -hmm. what people talked about and where's the beautiful beaches mm -hmm. and um it just it didn't match my expectations at all and I vowed never going back to Bali that's really? it I've done that I'm never going back and um one of my best friends ended up moving to Jakarta and she said and I'm planning us a week in Bali and I was like oh I've had a terrible experience in Bali I just don't want to go back she yeah. went, no 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 I know all the places to go would be fabulous trust me I went back and we had the best week so my two girlfriends and I and then I've been back That's wonderful. six times since but what was what went wrong the first time you were just maybe you went with a lot of expectations I think and, expectations yeah I think the resort mm -hmm. also that that, that destination yeah. it wasn't my kind this, yeah. I mean like anywhere that you visit there's places that you like and yeah. you don't yeah that was it was very backpackerish mm. it wasn't my kind of destination to visit at all so I think yes expectations mm -hmm. and just that was that I would say would probably be the biggest thing yeah it just didn't meet my thoughts yeah so Kelly now um something that I really want to know from you is one hidden gem give us one hidden gem that you have it, it's not very hidden but certainly in an experience mm -hmm. sense mm -hmm. um was draft manner oh um, so that was incredible yeah and, and I think people might think you know is it worth the money yeah um is it worth the experience mm -hmm. we ended up doing two nights rather than one night Big so what was the experience here. like I so, mean, I mean, the giraffes, is it like what you see in the pictures? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And my mum had done a lot of research beforehand because, mm -hmm. again, it was her. She's my big traveling companion. How nice. Um, and she'd done, a, we'd booked it 18 months in advance. Wow. Yeah. And we had um, specific, all the rooms are named after the giraffes. Mm -hmm. um, and we had, my mum had researched and one room was particularly good the the giraffes came to okay, they come up in the morning they, they come to your room in the morning wow yeah. i thought they only come to the breakfast table oh no 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 they come so first of all they come to your room wow. so they walk up and they just wander around and then you open your window and like it's dark it yeah. was just starting to get light yeah. and then you already start to feed them and then you get ready and you go down and then you have breakfast with them as well so they peep into your room yes and then there is food in the room already yeah so you've got little pellets okay that you can feed them i think they're pellets and yeah draft food um and then uh, was yeah. it scary at any point no, no they've got the longest tongues oh the longest tongues you've ever seen like th i think they said like between 30 and 50 so centimeters. how many can come into the room at one time well so um there's maybe like two windows there so Two, two of maybe. them yeah. okay we had a balcony so one came up to the balcony one would go to the window so and then you just feed them yeah and then when you go downstairs at the breakfast table they're there as, as well. well yeah and that's when you have all your breakfast out and they come in and they don't eat from your plate do they no 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 they, not that I remember <laughs> and they just eat the the pellets and then you know they you just give them one at a time yeah but you got a bit more comfortable because then yeah. you've had the afternoon tea with them as well so the hype is all worth it yeah yeah I love that I really oh. love that. Okay, so yeah, we yeah. have the giraffe manor in Nairobi. In Nairobi, in yeah. Nairobi. Yeah. Fantastic, amazing. So if you had to travel around the world, yeah. 
in a day or if you could travel around the world in a day, where would you like to have breakfast? Where would you like to have lunch? And where would you like to have dinner? Ooh, very good question. Um, God, there's too many places to pick, I mm-hmm. think. I love breakfast. Mm-hmm. I think one of the more sort of memorable breakfasts, so potentially back to Cape Town. And, uh, you know, sitting at the bottom of the V&A, you know, with the uh, table mountain behind yeah, you. Yeah, It was lovely. We had a really nice breakfast there. A uh, little mimosa at breakfast time mm-hmm. and then went for a walk up mm-hmm. table mountain. Um, so I'd maybe do that. After the mimosa. Oh. Um, and then lunch somewhere else. Um, I'd probably pick, I love a, I love a yacht. Like mm. I love a... A sailing holiday. So I would maybe pick somewhere on a boat. Okay. Um, and do a lunch out. Any particular area Destination. The, the BVIs was fun because there were so many different islands. So mm. potentially lunchtime sailing around the BVIs, stopping in at the different places. That sounds very yeah, good. Yeah, that okay. could be nice. Okay. Um, and and then dinner dinner um somewhere in new york but you like a yeah i was just going to say you like yeah. a rooftop bar so yeah, you know when yeah, on new, new york, york yeah new york um and interestingly I had fabulous lunches there as well mm-hmm. um bagatelle was brilliant we did a big lunch oh, there the bagatelle in new york is fantastic yeah and it's just got yeah. a brilliant atmosphere yeah, yeah. um so maybe a dinner somewhere there mm-hmm. um but i don't know which restaurant do i have to even pick okay. a restaurant no that's okay yeah that's okay i would pick probably somewhere in new york yeah and you can eat early in New York. Mm. I like that. Yeah. that I like to eat early anyway. <laughs> Me too. So. But the hardest like, thing is, is when you're, you don't have children and you go to places, yeah. you sit with the kids at seven o'clock to eat. Yeah. If you're in a hotel. Yeah. Um, whereas in New York, I think you've got the after work yeah. crowd and stuff Culture, like that. The whole so thing is there. Yeah. And I think, it, you know, a lot of people go straight out after work there. Mm. So I quite like that yeah. environment yeah. that we can eat at six or seven o'clock mm. and be home for 10. Yeah. That's perfect. So, you know, coming back to Dubai now and um, a lot of places around here as well. So Mm. what are your choices? What are your picks for breakfast, lunch and dinner here in Dubai? Interesting. So breakfast here, um, I've tried a lot recently. Um, I... We've done the Strand mm-hmm. on the Pam. They do a brilliant value lunch, uh, breakfast, sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, 99 dirhams, um, juice, coffee. That. Yeah, juice, coffee or tea, um, croissants of your choice. And What's it called? The Strand. Okay. Um, and I really like it. So I've okay. done that a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually really liked uh, Kareen. Kareen. Kareen, Kareen, sorry. Yes, yeah. And um, Emirates Golf Course mm-hmm. for breakfast. Mm-hmm. Their truffle eggs was lovely. Mm. Um Someone else was telling me Josette is really nice. Josette is really nice. For breakfast, haven't done that yet. Okay. Um, They also do some really nice eggs. Really? So yeah, yeah, I'm I'm very boring. I kind of just like my eggs. I was just at Bungalow 34 for breakfast the other day, um, which was nice. I took my family there, so... There'd so be someone, have, I'd like a breakfast out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We figured. <laughs> yeah. That's good. So what about lunch? Lunch, um, where would I pick for lunch? Interestingly, I took for girlfriends for lunch at Bungalow 34 earlier this year. That was lovely. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, you yeah. still have dinner. <sighs> You're dinner, not a dinner, dinner person, I know. <laughs> yeah. But do you, know where I, do you know where I've been for dinners and I've really enjoyed it? Amazonica. Mm. I liked... Mm. Um, now, I might get this wrong. Mr. Nice Guy? Yeah. Like Mr. that nice as well? Guy, yeah. I like the ambience in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Um, for dinner. And probably my favourite, the uh, back to the other end of town, Mot 32. I like Mot 32. Oh, the I views. Really like, yeah, they've the just views started a brunch, stunning. actually. And yeah. I haven't done that, but I'd be interested to yeah. try that. But you can't sit outside during the hot no. break. Yeah. Okay, so we have this, we have quite a few places from Dubai now yeah. to go for breakfast, lunch and dinner. But since you've been here for such a long time, yeah. tell us that one experience that you would highly recommend for anyone to experience when, you know, they're here or even for people who live here, anything in the in Dubai or in the UAE that you highly recommend? It's not food related. It doesn't have to be. Yeah, it doesn't have to be. Because we talked a lot about food. Um, I took my partner out on the Platinum Heritage yeah. experience, a which was the talk about that. Yeah. Um, Land Rovers. And it's been years mm. since I've done... Um, been out to the desert mm. and it was just a much more sophisticated experience mm. so i definitely put that up there mm. but my other side i love a water park 
also and the others you know yeah. completely two ends of the yeah. spectrum um i love you know i love being out love being active um so i would say um but yeah the platinum heritage was a, a great experience okay nice yeah. so now what is next on your list to travel to do your bucket list Ooh. what what are the big things that I, you haven't tick marked yes yet um so i think antarctica is on there mm. to do something really different mm. um i think that's something i'd like to do um we'd love to do a safari like mm-hmm. I, i've done a little bit of a safari but i'd love to do a proper safari mm-hmm. so that's on the list potentially as honeymoon mm-hmm. um seychelles is there because we've got the the paperwork um the the wedding a sky i've never experienced scotland oh so having left when i was 18 yeah i've now got this obsession that i want to go to the isle of sky yeah explore a few days in the isle of sky that's lovely yeah. and go do some whiskey tasting as well essentially yeah yeah, yeah but just again the scenery it just it just looks amazing Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, I have not had a very good experience in Scotland. So really? I'm not oh, did, it, did it rain? It did, and I went in the peak of summer, which is supposedly the peak of summer, yeah. which is July, August. Yeah, yeah. And it was cold, and it was raining. It was my birthday. I was there with my parents and my husband, and my dad had planned this big dinner and everything. And both my husband and my dad, and I did not even get out of bed. I was like I'm not going anywhere it's raining it's cold I am not stepping out of bed and I just refused it was so cold it was almost depressing and then what did I do we we had take away I'm like was this had- in Edinburgh Yes, it yeah. was Edinburgh. Which Edinburgh is beautiful. But it again, is a go, beautiful it's, city. It's expectations. It was just, yeah, again. Like, you know, I have been saying no quite a few times to go back to just because of that experience. Yeah. But I should go back, you know. Because it is, there's so much yeah, to do yeah. there. And it and is really beautiful. But you, you yeah. just have to go with winter clothes. Yeah. Like yeah. It, it, and, and layers. Like mm. it is very much a layer yeah um winter it is, yeah it um, is winter it's there's never summer so yeah. you know you have to take that out of your mind yeah so yeah kelly this was so wonderful i really hope that you get to go to antarctica and you have this amazing wedding Thank in seychelles so uh but i just want you to now tell us where can people find you if they want to find you and um you know do their personal branding for them so Thanks where can so they find much. you so uh, instagram mm-hmm. i'm on that a lot kelly lumberg dot official mm-hmm. i've started a new account on there mm-hmm. um kelly lumberg official.com is mm-hmm. my website so come and say hi there are the two places and linkedin i'm on as well but uh, yeah i do share a lot of my travel like i just i love to travel so there'll be more coming watch this i space. am waiting i am waiting to hear all about your travels and i wish you all the best and i hope you have a great 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 future with your husband thank you so much <laughs> so thank you very much appreciate that Thank you everyone for tuning in today. I hope our conversations have fueled your wanderlust and inspired you to explore the world in new and exciting ways. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and leave a comment below and let us know what you thought of today's episode. Until next time, safe travels and keep exploring.